Hey, Hansi here. Today I'm making a low budget colored light bar to give me some more interesting lighting options. It can be a decorative ambient light, but I'll mainly be using it as a functional low budget videography light. For portability, it has the option to be powered either with a battery or a standard 12 volt power supply. The structure of the light bar will be 3D printed, so I went into Fusion 360 to design it. Before I started, I knew I wanted it to have some sort of hexagonal shape, so it could be rotated to aim the light in different directions. This is maybe my third time designing something to 3D print, so it took me a little while, but eventually I got to a place where I was happy with the design. The printing itself took around 20 hours, which was at the limit of what I had time for. If I had a bit more time, I might have printed it even larger, but I'll probably make another one of these in the future. The result of the print turned out pretty great. It's not perfect, as there is a bit of warpage at the bottom, but it's good enough to move along with the build. I want this light to be powered by batteries like this. It's the same Sony battery as my video light uses, and it's easy to get hold of as there exists a lot of off-brand replicas. I will also take advantage of the battery charger. While it holds the battery well in place, the most beautiful part is that the battery socket detaches from the rest of the charger. This is pretty useful, and if you haven't already guessed why, you will know it in a minute. I'm using some digital calipers to measure the height and width of the battery connectors. By combining a picture with the measurements of the battery socket, I can replicate the design in Fusion 360. The idea is to implement the battery connector design on the side of the lamp, so the battery can easily be attached to and detached from the lamp structure. The two rectangular holes in the middle makes room for the electrical connections to the battery. I sent it to Kira for slicing and then I started the print. It's being printed standing upright because it makes the connector joint stronger. The print turned out pretty good but it still needed some filing to clean up the support and I also needed to reduce the size of the joints to make it fit right into the battery socket. Once that was done it fit really snugly. It's tight enough to not come out on its own and it's really simple to take out. You can even see the electric connection points through the holes I designed. Such a good feeling when things turn out how you want them. Now let's move on. To lead power from the battery to the LED strips I'll be adding later, I'm going to use this thin piece of aluminum. I cut some strips narrow enough to fit through the slits for the battery connector. Before I'm doing anything else, I'm going to solder some wires to these aluminum pads. It is much easier to do it now, before it's attached to the 3D print, where there's a risk of melting everything. When both of them were done, I had to try to figure out which was the positive connector and which was the negative. I could easily have used my voltmeter to figure this out, but I trusted the markings on the front to correspond to the connectors on the back. I even marked the one I thought was the positive one with the red marker but I tested it off cam and it turns out it was the opposite way. So I guess the moral of the story is to always use a voltmeter. To make the battery connectors touch my aluminum pads, I bent them into V-shapes that would protrude through the surface and hopefully connect with the battery when it got attached. And spoiler alert, it did work. To fix the pads right in place, I just used some regular hot glue. It bonds really well with the 3D printed PLA. And as usual, I ended up making a large gluey mess, but let's not focus on that part. This is a boost converter. With my limited knowledge of electronics, all I know is that it takes a power source with a given voltage as input and increases that voltage on the output. So my battery gives off 8.6 volts, but the LED strips needs it to be increased to 12 volts, and that's why I'm using it. By turning this knob here, the voltage on the output is increased. Super simple, kinda like magic. To make sure it all works, I'm using some wires with alligator clips to connect to an LED controller, which again is connected to an LED strip. It seems to be working. You know, when the disco lights are on, we're ready to move along. This is where I measure and cut out all the LED strips that I will be using. I'm going for 12 LEDs on each row, with 5 rows all together and that's exactly one meter of LED strip. The next part is the tedious part, soldering all the strips together. 
since the space is so tight and the strips has to bend in strange ways, I was extra careful not to short anything out. If you want to do something like this, my best tip is to test for each strip that you have soldered, so if something goes wrong then you know where the mistake is. Also sometimes I found defect strips where the solder pads don't work even though you soldered to it properly, so testing is just a good measure. I also use some extra hot glue to keep the strips in place. And if you wonder why I have holes in the lamp floor, it is to reduce the printing time on the 3D printer and to give the strip some extra air. And with the magic of time lapsing, we are done with the LED soldering. And this is what we have so far. Now, if this lamp is going to be used for a more permanent installation, like as an ambient light, it would be nice to be able to power it with a cable as well. Say hello to my little friend, the female DC power connector. I'm just gonna mark a little spot for it right at the bottom of the lamp. I'm using some masking tape to prevent fraying the material, but the infill percent of this print was so low that it almost broke through immediately. I made sure it was room for the little friend, and then I had to solder on some cables to lead the power in the right direction. After soldering it, I measured out the length of the lamp to lead the cables out at the top where the rest of the cables are. Turns out I forgot to leave some extra cable for the actual connection of the cables later on, so I had to spend quite a while extending the cables. The moral of this story, always leave some extra cable. For good measure I used some heat shrink to protect the solder joints, and then I could thread the cable through the entire lamp. I joined the cables from the connector with the LED cable and then I attached them to the out pads on the boost converter. Disclaimer, this works for me and it has been working for a while, but I'm not really sure if the converter likes having 12 volt on the out pads without anything coming into it when the battery is disconnected. If I did something wrong, I always love it when you guys yell at me in the comment section. Again, I used some hot glue to make sure the RGB connectors from the controller to the LED strips wouldn't disconnect, then I added some hot glue to the side of the RGB controller and pushed it in with the hot glue side facing the inside wall. For the boost converter I used some stand-up screws with M3 nuts at the top to create some space between the board and the surface beneath it. To be able to attach it into the lamp I cut a little piece of wood that could be attached from underneath the stand-up screws. Having that all done, I could paint the underside of the wood with hot glue and then neatly push it into the hollow space of the lamp. There's a bit too much hot glue in here for my taste and much of it could be avoided if I spent more time integrating the components with the 3D design. If I ever make another one, I'll probably fix quite a lot of minor things in the design to make the whole process a tad easier, cleaner and less painful. After a final disco light check that I didn't mess anything up, I could permanently fix the edge of the lamp that has the battery connector on it to the lamp itself. In the next step I will be applying a white carbon fiber sticker surface. I really like the look of this sticker and it can be used for so many things for a simple way to make things look a lot better. I think this build can look really good if it's made with looks in mind, but at this point I was rushing it a bit. When the functionality is done I tend to get quite impatient. I'm working on it, but anyway the job of applying the sticker was a bit half-hearted, so just look at it with the potential in mind and maybe not the actual execution. To protect the LEDs from dust and stuff, I'll be adding a front panel of acrylic. As I have the exact measurements of the front from when I made the 3D model, tracing out the proportions on the acrylic was pretty easy. To cut the acrylic, I scored it with a knife, over and over, and then I could snap it against the workbench. It's a tedious task, but I find it produces straight and reliable cuts. It was super satisfactory to insert the acrylic into the lamp. It fits snugly and it's held in place purely because of the tight fit. This means that I can switch the acrylic out with a more diffuse one if I ever want to make it look prettier or have a less harsh light. 
As I said, I will be using this to add some colored lights to video shots, so let's take a look at some of the stuff I've tested it on. And that's a wrap for this project. So far it has been super useful for me and I hope you got something out of it as well. The uploads have been a bit irregular lately, but if you want to see more of us, check us out on Instagram. Have a good day and I'll see you next time.